What's up everybody, it's Joe with Jade Lake Photo. And in today's video, I wanna talk about the most recent firmware update for the Canon EOS R6 and how it makes it kind of a totally different camera. All right, everybody, just before we get into it, I just wanna remind everyone that if you are into gear, if you're into cameras, photography, videography, drones, gadgets, all the fun nerdy type stuff, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, go ahead and give this video a like, and if you're into stills photography, go ahead and find me over on Instagram or over on my new website, jblake.photo. Okay, so enough of that, let's talk about this camera. So the EOS R6 came out about a year ago. I got it just a little bit after its initial release because there were some constraints of supply related to COVID uh, and just the fact that this was a very popular camera at the very beginning. But there were some things that I personally was not 100% sure about, and I know there were a handful of folks who agreed with me that maybe Canon didn't do the best with on the initial release. But over the last year, they have slowly but surely been improving this camera with firmware updates. And just recently, we got firmware update 1.4 that really added quite a bit to the offerings that this camera has. So the two items in particular that I want to kind of focus on for this video as it relates to the firmware update that we got from Canon, number one is the fact that now we have Canon Log 3. Uh, now, what Canon Log 3 is, what a log profile is, it's, it's a color profile that you can select while recording that pretty much records a very desaturated, uh, very low contrast version of your scene onto your card. So instead of applying any sort of saturation or sharpening or really any kind of color modification whatsoever, uh, it just gives you a very desaturated version onto your card. Now, the advantage there is that you can go in later and do quite a bit of modification in post when it comes to things like color correction or artistic application of LUTs or just really gives you the, the footage a lot more flexibility after the fact. So maybe you need to recover some highlights, maybe you need to bring up some shadows. The log profile gives you the opportunity to do that while preserving a lot of your highlights and your color and really just, again, gives you a little bit more dynamic range when it comes to editing. Now, I can hear you, you're saying, well, Joe, I thought the R6 came with a flat log profile already. Doesn't every camera come with a log profile? And yes, the R6 came with what's called Canon Log. Canon Log is the same thing that actually came on the EOS R, uh, which is great, except uh, for the fact that, honestly, it's not the best log profile and the Canon Log 3, or the third version of Canon Log, uh, is more commonly used in some of their more professional and higher-end cinema cameras. The reason now that it's very interesting and, and really rather revolutionary that the R6 is getting the Log 3 profile is number one, it creates better footage to edit later. So I'm going to Maui next week and I am super excited to have this Log profile because there are some really contrasty uh, environments on that island where I'm very excited to be able to film things like sunsets, jungle scenes, uh, all sorts of stuff, waterfalls, where log profile is going to give me the best possible quality, the best possible dynamic range, and the best color reproduction possible. But the second reason, and probably more important uh, for the R6, is the fact that the Canon Log 3 profile is what comes on the R5 now with the firmware update and on many of the cinema cameras. What that means is that the R6 now, from a color standpoint, can match up with the cinema cameras as a B or C camera. So if you're looking for a backup camera, if you're looking for an additional camera on set or on scene, this might be the camera for you. Now, this is not a dedicated cinema camera that you would see like the C700, C500, C300 that you can get from Canon and it doesn't even have all the cinema related features that you might get in the R5 and it doesn't have the quality or the, the resolution of the sensor in the R5. But for the cost and the fact that you can now shoot with this Log3 profile, if you're mixing it up with different Canon cameras on set, this is a great addition to get an inexpensive B camera to add to your kit and to your setup. The second part of the firmware update that really does bring this camera up in line with more professional 
uh, level cameras is the fact that now you can do dual recording to both cards for video. Um, this is huge. If you are filming, say a wedding, and this is your secondary camera, maybe you've got the C700 or the R5 as your primary camera, and you're recording a wedding, and you've got the R6 as your second angle, and it dies, or the card gets corrupted, that's a problem. And if you don't record to both cards, you just lost that angle. And if you're selling a dual angle cut to your client, that's a, that's a problem for you. So this is great. You can now record to both cards and you can get backup whenever you need it to both cards. That is huge, that is awesome. Honestly, those two things, the ability to shoot with the Canon Log 3 profile and the ability to record to both cards is huge in the, in the, in the professional sphere and it really brings this camera up. Uh, in line with other cameras and puts it in a place where really it would make sense to be a backup camera on a film set, uh, on a documentary, uh, at a big wedding, uh, really, you know, anything where you need a secondary camera uh, that's simple and easy and that you can just set up. Now it does still have some limitations, don't get me wrong, there's still some stuff that we need fixed, but I'll talk about that in just a second. First, I wanna show you how to do the firmware update if you've never done that before. And I wanna show some examples of the footage that I got. I just recorded a couple little things here in the office to compare the differences between the Log3 profile, and I'm shooting on it right now, uh, that profile, and what we were getting with, or what we are getting with the other more traditional Log profile. Um, and, and I still use the Log profile here on the R, but I wanna show you the Log profile versus the Log3 profile here on the R6 so that you can um, make a decision for yourself. Hey everybody, it's Joe from the future. Real quick, while I was editing this video, uh, Canon actually released the 1.4 firmware for the R5 as well. And there's a couple of kind of differences in that one versus what was released for the R6. It also has the dual card slot recording, so you can get that backup recording, which is huge but it also now allows you to export or record uh, 8K30 in ProRes to a Ninja, uh, to the external recorder. That is awesome, uh, that is huge, adding ProRes and adding the ability to do it onto an external recorder. So awesome for the R5, fantastic. Once again, Canon continues to update these cameras and really kind of continue to make them better and better and better. I hope that goes uh, forward. I hope we see more of that over time. Uh, I'm going to get back to the video. Uh, you should too. To get the latest Canon firmware, you're going to head over to canon.com. Now I'm in the US, so I'm at www.usa.canon.com and I have navigated through the support uh, tab up here to cameras, DSLRs and mirrorless, mirrorless, EOS R6. And when you're on the page for the EOS R6, if you scroll down here, you'll see that there are these different sections. And I have selected drivers and downloads. And under drivers and downloads, I've selected firmware. It's automatically detected my operating system, which is Mac OS Catalina. And what you'll see is a list of firmwares available. Now, right now, the most recent version and the one that we want is version 1.4. Now 1.4 comes in two different versions. There is a version for Windows, uh, which is in the zip format, and a version for Mac OS in the DMG format. Now if you go to the software details here, it will actually tell you exactly what is in this firmware update. And so it tells you right here that this firmware update incorporates the following enhancements. The first one here, adds Canon Log 3 to the Canon Log settings. That's really the reason why we wanna get this. The second reason is that it adds simultaneous movie recording on cards one and two, which is awesome. And then there's some support, some support for uh, new lenses, um, some HDMI connection issues, and some other fixes, things that were in previous firmware updates, but really those top two and really that top one adding Canon Log 3 and adding simultaneous movie recording to cards one and card two as a backup. 
So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and hit the download button and it's gonna go ahead and download to your computer. Once you've downloaded it, you're going to extract it. Again, mine's gonna come in a DMG file. If you're on a Windows machine, it's gonna come in a zip file. Now I've gone ahead and extracted the DMG file and there are two items inside. One is this .fir file. That is our actual firmware file. And you can tell because it says EOS R6 140, that's 1.40 .fir, and that means firmware. In the folder here, we've got the update procedures, and this comes in various languages. Take this fir file, and I'm going to copy it over to the card that I have, and now I'm just going to eject that, and I'm gonna update my camera. I'm gonna go ahead and put the card into the slot and turn the camera on. It's gonna know right away that there's a firmware file in there, and I'm gonna head over to the configuration or utility section of my menu. I'm gonna to go to firmware and I'm gonna hit okay. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna load the program that's running on the card and start the update. Uh, now I've sped this up considerably. This took about 15 minutes, maybe a little bit less, uh, not too long, but you just kind of leave it and then it is done after a quick restart. And then you can see when you go through the menu, um, that going to the Canon Log settings, you can now see that you have Canon Log 3 as an option in addition to Canon Log. Now, my philosophy in recording these two sections were what was really to try and hit zero uh, EV and have the same exposure. Um, and in doing that, I can tell right away that even at a higher ISO, because uh, the base ISO for Canon Log 3 is a little higher, at the higher ISO, Canon Log 3 significantly reduced the amount of clipping and the amount of highlight recovery that we had available. Um, you can actually, I, I can see it on the scopes. As the swipe happens, I can see that there's so much more highlight available. Um, and now going to see the Canon LUT and the Canon uh, Log 3 LUT applied, um, the color seems more vibrant and to be honest, it, it just, it looks clearer. There's more detail. And again, we've got more information, not just in the highlights, but in the shadows, there's more detail in the shadows. Um, I can see it when I zoom in and I can see it again in my scopes as I correct this footage. Um, it just places more of the information more of the video signal into the center of the histogram to allow me more control. So now with that example, how do you feel about the differences between the log profile and log three? Does it make the difference for you in purchasing this camera? I, I wanna know down in the comments if this really kind of changes things for you related to the R6. This is this definitely now at 2,500 bucks? Is this on your list? Um, I know there, there were a lot of folks who were looking at the R5 with the bigger sensor, but specifically the fact that now it has log three and saying, okay, that's the direction I'm gonna go. But now with the R6 having that down sample 5.2K to 4K, not having the overheating issues, um, but still being able to shoot fabulous 4K video now in log three, do you maybe save 1300 bucks and get this instead of the R5? Let me know down in the comments. And maybe, maybe you're the type of person that you don't shoot in log at all. You're just run and gun, you don't really care, you're shooting in standard profile, uh, and you're just cutting it together afterwards. But maybe that dual card recording is huge for you because you've had maybe cards go bad um, and you're really looking for, for that feature. Uh, let me know down in the comments uh, how you feel about that. Um, and then also, just like I mentioned in, you know, earlier in the video, there are definitely a handful of things that Canon still could do with this camera. Number one, if they were to release an update that allowed us to shoot in all eye. Right now we're still shooting in IPB, which honestly the quality of this camera is so phenomenal. I don't know that we would really notice the difference and I really appreciate the smaller file sizes. But maybe that's something that you might want. You want that all eye. I know I would probably shoot in all eye if I had it as an option. I know that when I'm shooting on the R, I'm shooting in all eye. And the second thing is the record limit. Honestly, if they did away with the record limit, no record limit, all I, the ability to record to both slots and log three.
maybe they realize that that makes it kind of the perfect 4K camera. Um, and then drop the price 500 bucks. <laughs> uh, it's got awesome autofocus, great low light performance. Uh, I mean, honestly, and, and it's blazing fast for stills. I, I love this camera. Uh, it has yet to disappoint me, to be quite honest, yet to disappoint me. And there's still features that I haven't even played with. Anyway, let me know down in the comments if this changes the game for you on the R6. And um, yeah, hit subscribe, hit like, follow me over on Instagram. Uh, thanks, honestly, everybody who continues to follow me and continues to subscribe to the channel and watch these random videos that I make. Uh, I appreciate it and I love doing it. It's fun for me. This is the Friday video. Uh, my Monday video should be, if I do it right, my packing plans for Maui as I leave for next week. And then next Friday, you're probably gonna get a video about how I deal with ADHD and planning and being a photographer on YouTube. Okay, thanks. I'll see you in the next one.